Welcome, this is what is happening on the sun today, 26th of August 2011. I've been getting a lot of questions about objects moving across the field of view in the various chronograph images. I thought a good topic to talk about today is where is the sun? So later I'm going to show some star maps to show where the sun is and what some of the objects you're seeing in the field of view are. But for today's trivia question, I'm going to ask what constellation is the sun in at the moment and what constellation does it move to next? The answer will be given at the end. According to Noah, we had another sea flare earlier today. Again, from the plot, it doesn't look like it. But remember, this is the five minute average data. If the flare is very impulsive and short lived, then averaging it over five minutes will make it appear a lot dimmer than it actually is. But as I have mentioned in the past, short impulsive flares indicate growth. So one of these regions must be growing. So let's take a look around and see what's going on. We have seven numbered regions on the disk at present. Although no one have you believe there are eight, but I can find no sunspots in region 1274 anymore. So I think that one's gone. Region 1272 has a few tiny spots in it, but still the star of the show is region 1271. So let's take a look at that in more detail. This is what it looked like yesterday, and here is how it appears today. It looks as though there's been a great deal of decay in the region. However, we must remember that it's moving towards the limb, and foreshortening will make it appear as though the region is shrinking and also making some of the spots disappear. Trailing it to the north and east and to the south and east are two new regions that weren't there yesterday. The larger and more complex of these has been number 1278 and this growth could be a possible source of the impulsive flares we've been seeing. Now let's take a look at the return of region 1263. Noah has numbered the two large spots here as different regions the leading one being 1277 and the trailing one being 1279. I think when you look at the magnetic movie later on you'll see that this was a correct decision to label these as two separate regions. That means they are simple unipolar spots, albeit very large ones, so I don't expect very much activity from them. Regions 1275 and 1276 nearer to disk centre have shown some minor signs of growth, however the regions are still relatively small and relatively weak. However, we should keep an eye on them in case they continue to develop. So overall, solar activity has been very low despite the huge increase in the sunspot number. But I won't bore you yet again with another rant about how sunspot number is a useless measure of solar activity. So let's move on and take a look at the evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours. In both the sunspot and magnetic movies, see if you can identify the regions that are growing and the regions that are decaying. It may be worth running through this part of the video several times in full resolution mode to look at each region individually. However, it is the transition region movie that gives us our final clue and solves the riddle of where this activity is coming from. If you look at region 1271, you'll see there's a series of very impulsive bursts that come out of it in the form of ejecta. Here's a freeze frame showing that phenomenon. Watch the video and towards the end you'll see there are many such bursts now these are probably going to lead to coronal mass ejection, so we should look at the SOHO data and see if there are any faint coronal mass ejections off the west limb. I mentioned yesterday that there was a region coming over the southeast limb in a couple of days time, but if it's a substantial region then we should start seeing first hints of it even now in the low temperature coronal movie. So keep an eye on the movie and see whether you can see any large loops coming over the limb. In the high temperature coronal picture from the SXI instrument on GOES, you can see that that coronal hole has yet moved further into the western hemisphere and should be affecting us in the next day or two. Also on the southeast limb you can see the region that's about to rotate onto the disk much more clearly in the higher temperature plasma. In the Soho coronagraph movies, look towards the west limb and see if you can see those uh, coronal mass ejections associated with the activity in region 1271. I think I see four. Perhaps if you look carefully you'll be able to see even more of them. Turning now to the solar wind using the ACE data, we can see the temperature of the solar wind is relatively low but has remained constant. The solar wind speed has dropped a little over the last 24 hours as we predicted, and the density is changing quite a bit but has increased to an average of about one proton per cubic centimeter. The high energy electron flux is steadily increasing, but we still have no proton events. The auroral zone looks very quiet and the KP index has been varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the X-ray background remained at about the B3 level, 
Sunspot numbers increased to 97. The radio sun intensities remained at about 104 solar flux units. Solar wind speed is at 380 kilometers per second, with a density of about one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are very quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours will be very similar to yesterday's, with C flares being a possibility, M flares being unlikely, and a very remote chance of getting any X flares. The sunspot number will remain high. Coronal mass ejections are possible. Solar wind speed will remain low and the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm is very low indeed. If we look at the composite coronal image we can see that there's a region just over the southeast limb that's due back by tomorrow I would guess. And then there's a series of relatively faint regions in the northern hemisphere that are coming over in the next two or three days. But we're probably going to have to wait at least five to six days before we get any major bright regions back. The answer to the first part of our trivia question is that the Sun is currently in the constellation of Leo. I've taken one of the images from the Lasco C3 uh, data set and marked on there the stars that are currently present. You can see Regulus, Alpha Leo, just to the right of the Sun at the moment. Eta Leo is to the northwest of the Sun, whereas Pi Leo is to the southwest of the Sun. You can see Rho Leo trailing to the south and east, near the occulting disk support arm and Venus north and east of the Sun are moving slowly east, unlike the stars which will move from left to right, i.e. from east to west. The answer to the second part of the trivia question is that the Sun next moves into the constellation of Virgo. Now just a warning, as you've probably heard, there's a hurricane heading up the east coast. Now the forecast for our area sounds as though it's improving a little, but we can never count on that. So if the Sun today does not appear in the next couple of days, you'll know that our power is down or our internet service is down. Probably the latter. Anyway, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.